my little packet of belts has arrived, so I'm going to make an attempt to fix this Iowa Walkman. This one I also bought, a um, very beat up Panasonic, and I was thinking, oh, that'll definitely be a good candidate for repair. But unfortunately, it works perfectly. Not exactly hi-fi, but pretty decent looking mechanism in that, actually. Um, this is auto reverse. It works fine. It needs the heads and pinch are always cleaned, which I haven't done, but that's a trivial task. Anyway, as something practical to listen to tapes, that's actually not too bad. Well, this one doesn't work. It's, uh, I can't really demonstrate what it's doing on camera. It doesn't have enough torque to drag the, um, to, to well, drag a tape through the uh, through the mechanism. So the my suspicion is is that the belt's slipping. It seems a reasonable one given how old it is, and the belt's probably pretty hard. Well, this is obviously, as you can see, all plastic mechanism. This is quite late given the design and what I've read about these. I suspect this is you know in the late '90s, probably early 2000s. I wouldn't think the Panasonic is very different in time. The Panasonic has a digital tuner, which would have got you into the mid 90s, probably. Certainly I owned a Panasonic, a higher end model than that, at some time in that period. And uh, it also had a digital tuner, although it had um, motor operated controls, so soft touch controls on the Walkman, which is why I bought it. It wasn't actually the best sounding thing it always had the anti-rolling in, in it didn't work all that well. And uh, if you wiggled it around, you ended up with well and flutter. These little Iowas are kind of indestructible otherwise. And um, this has been well used too, not as much as the Panasonic, but this is, someone got their, their value out of this. So I'm going to try to open it up off camera, I think, because I will knock the camera over, but there's a screw there. And there's a screw there, and I suspect the rest of it's clips all the way around. Retained battery case, that's nice. I can't see through the camera. No, it doesn't look like there are any screws in there, unless there's something behind the label. Okay, I'm in. It was those two screws, these tiny ones there, which I've stowed in the belt clip. And I've had a series of one, two, three, four, five, like that counts as clips around, which you can get with one of these guitar pick thingies. Um, yeah, and that opened it up. And we've got a couple of chips. And this looks like what I might have to desolder. So, I can have a closer look at that and get right back to you. Okay, I think we're in the right direction now. So there was one screw over here, right there. Um, that's it, three screws holding the whole thing together. Um, this is the, this pulls out, there are the terminals, two ICs, a bunch of other components, motor which is connected and unfortunately says black and presumably says red underneath there can't see it and so i'm going to take that off and then i think i should be able to lift this out and expose the tape wire over on the other side as you can see the belt's right there and yeah well, there's some larger through hole stuff on the other side okay well let's uh, desolder this and see where it takes us. So here it is opened up, entirely plastic. I mean, really cheesy in that regard. But you can see that that belt is gone, so we'll take that out. It's not dirty, it's clean. Everything looks fine. So it's just a question. I'm looking through my selection of belts, 
can see if I have one that replaces that, that's entirely stretched out. But apart from that, it looks fine. It's just, it's just amazing how much this has been reduced, even if we compare to the complexity of the mechanism in what would not have been a fancy one, right? You get metal castings, a whole sheet metal thing. This is an auto reverse tape player, so it's a little bit more complicated. But still here, there's just nothing to it, right? One, one motor, one little belt, and some plastic gears. And that's probably the clutch that slips the take up reel. That's it. But it still manages to do fast forward, reverse, all that sort of stuff. So it works. There's just, there's not much to it. So I'm going to see if I have an appropriate belt and then we'll get it back together. All right, I've got a new belt on there. Seems to be working. Don't think that'll slip. Uh, it seems a little tight, but my memory is these things is they should be pretty tight. They're pretty stretchy. The one that I replaced, pardon for moving the camera like this. This is the one that was and it's like it's totally turned into goo. Right? It's just like it's a good thing I got it off there. Anyway. Fairly decent ferrite rod considering for the AM radio. I didn't test it beyond making sure it works, but having an AM radio in a Walkman was always a bit of a treat. I don't use it for anything but sports, but uh, but it's nice to have. Okay, I've soldered it back on, and I just want to point out that, and put the screw in that there's a lovely little marking for, for the screw. I don't know why that really amuses me. Okay, so I think I can get some batteries and test it out. Okay, two problems fixed. One was the reading of this little wire, which I think goes to the tape head. That would be my guess. Um, the second problem was is that I had the switch in radio, not, uh, not tape player. So let's open it up. And we've got action. Fast forward. Reverse. Play. All seems to be working. So I'm going to put it back together and I will try it out with some appropriate music for So as the rush test confirms, it is now working perfectly. I, I don't see any anything wrong with that. Getty sounds fine. Um, I, I mean, it's kind of amazing how little there is to this. There's certainly not much high-end response, but it's, you know, it's better than you think. And certainly for I imagine that the wow and flutter on classical music would sound fairly question, fairly poor, but, um, you know, it's not that bad, assuming the motor's not too bad. And the real issue for wow and flutter isn't that these two reels here, isn't the take up reel and uh, on the other end, the, the and the one that feeds it, the, almost all of the issues around Wow and Flutter are around the capstan and the, sorry about that, and the, uh, the pinch roller. And if that mechanism is working properly, then Wow and Flutter will be under control. So it's really just down to a few parts there. And although everything else is plastic and junk, assuming that the bearing that that capstan is running on is reasonably good, and the motor's okay, you could get okay performance. And I'm sure that of those two chips in there, one of them is essentially the amplifier and tape player chip, and the other one's the radio. I've got to say, I didn't try to look at the numbers or anything. Maybe they show on the, on the video. 
the, uh, the other sort of issue about this kind of plastic mechanism is the alignment of the tape to the head. Uh, since that's just maintained by a plastic piece under here. And that's always an issue with small tape players. Um, you know, back in the day when companies like Iowa were making high, high quality home tape players, you would see, you know, cast aluminum or metal pieces that they ran in with you know, machined bearings and all sorts of the kind of stuff that you'd expect on something that had to stay in alignment. On this, it's uh, it's pretty rough and ready, but it does work. And, you know, there are worse sounding Walkmans out there. I'm reasonably pleased with this. This was very straightforward to fix. So I would say if you run into one of these at a... Uh, at a thrift store or grab it, right? There's just not much electronics to go wrong on it. And, uh, you know, get yourself a set of belts. It's all pretty straightforward.